bi? No. You're bi? No. Are we all a little bi? No. Well, at least a third of us are. No. Sup everyone, Lacey Green here. Hi. According to a new study coming out of the UK, which you didn't link in the description, a full 29% of Americans under the age of 30 identify somewhere on the bisexual spectrum. Amongst the British under 25, that number jumps to almost 50%. What? That's a lot of bisexuality. Yes, but it doesn't look like it's accurate. This is really interesting for a number of reasons. Not really. For one, that number drops off a cliff amongst older people. In the over 45 age category, only 8% identify as bi. Perhaps because they have a different, more correct definition. Former studies also put the number of bisexuals at about 3.5% for American women and 1.1% for American men of all ages. Big difference! Scientists have actually thought for a long time that the numbers are a little low because of stigmas related to bisexuality. Perhaps. Who knows? It's just speculation. Bisexuality is a distinct category from being gay or lesbian or straight because those are all forms of monosexuality or being attracted to one gender. No shit, Sherlock. A good chunk of people who are bi hang out in limbo land, confused about how to label their sexuality. They might swing back and forth between homo and hetero before realizing, hey, I'm actually bi. This process is sometimes falsely interpreted by others as bisexuality being a choice. non secretary Citation. Men who are bisexual are less likely to be accepted overall, and they're sometimes thought to be closeted or on the way to coming out as gay, especially if he's dating a guy. Women who are bisexual are more likely to deal with the opposite. People sometimes think they're straight and just doing it for attention. Funny how we tend to accuse both bisexual men and women of secretly being attracted to men. So this poll was conducted by asking people where they fall on the Kinsey scale. You probably heard of the Kinsey scale, it's a pretty old school concept concocted by Alfred Kinsey in 1948. The scale goes from 0 to 6, with 0 being completely 100% hetero, to 6 being completely 100% homo. And at 3, a person is completely bisexual, and everything in between is just varying degrees of bisexuality. Later, X was added to the end of the scale to connote asexuality or a lack of sexual attraction. Now in the 1940s, this scale was a pretty radical new take on sexuality. It was but it's quite antiquated today. It's one of the first formal acknowledgments that sexuality is a continuum. It's not black and white, and a person might even identify at different places on the Kinsey scale throughout their life. Of course, it is just speculation, and there is nothing to back it up. It is plausible that changes depend on confusion or denial. Of course, studies like these have some people asking, hey, if we strip away all the labels, aren't we all a little bi deep down? Because people are retarded. Asexuals and people who answer not or six are not bisexual in the slightest. Kinsey thought that even straight people having really close friends of the same sex could put them on the bisexual spectrum. Antiquated idea. Freud thought that we all have some innate bisexuality. Because you're stupid and project your own experiences and ideas onto others. The reality is this, the perspective's a little outdated and it ultimately contributes to bisexual erasure. There are definitely people out there only attracted to one gender, and actively experiencing persistent attraction to multiple genders isn't the same thing as being open-minded about sexuality. Bisexuality is a distinct sexual orientation. No shit, Sherlock. I do think it's possible that conflating bisexuality with open-mindedness could be part of why the numbers are dramatically higher, and maybe the linear Kinsey scale isn't the best tool to evaluate these things. No shit, Sherlock. Conflating sexual orientation with other orientations could be a cause. There are over 200 different sexuality scales now, including one of my faves, the Klein Sexual Orientation Grid, which dissects many more dimensions of a person's orientation. If there's one thing for certain, though, it's that human sexuality is a whole lot more fluid and varied than a lot of people like to think, and people are feeling more comfortable being open about it. Bring on the future, baby. What? Feel free to share your thoughts down below, and until next time, stay braless. I don't use bros, but you do. Many believe that sexual attraction is the only form of interpersonal attraction. There are other well-established attractions. Romantic attraction, sensual attraction, and aesthetic attraction. Sexual attraction is the attraction a person feels towards another person. Romantic attraction towards another person is the same thing as being in love. Sensual attraction is similar to sexual attraction, but it is about non-sexual contact rather than sexual contact. 
aesthetic attraction towards a person is when you feel attracted because of her looks but with no form of desire or arousal for example when you think someone is cute aesthetic attraction may be the primary reason many answer neither not three nor six on a cancer scale especially women orientation is a classification on which groups of people you feel attracted towards for example heterosexuality is sexual and orientation which means you only feel attracted towards the opposite sex or gender. Classification is complicated by the existence of transsexuality but the major classes are hetero, homo, bi and a. These exist for all orientations. For example a heteroesthetic person only feels aesthetic attraction towards the opposite sex or gender. A homoesthetic person only feels aesthetic attractions towards the same sex or gender. A bi-aesthetic person feels aesthetic attraction toward both sexes, and an anesthetic person does not feel aesthetic attraction at all. Because of transsexuality, we also have poly and pan, meaning feeling attraction toward multiple genders and feeling attraction independently of gender and sex, respectively. Pan is also called omni. Sexual attraction, romantic attraction, sensual attraction and aesthetic attraction are orthogonal, which can cause confusion. For example, some people are homosexual but heteroesthetic. If a man has these preferences, he would want to have sex with men but do not find them cute. But he can find women cute but feel no desire to have sex with them. Obviously this is confusing at first and the person may think he is bisexual. An asexual person does not feel any sexual attraction. However, this does not mean that she does not feel the, the desire to have sex. She has not desired to have sex with specific people. Asexual people seldom register as a on all other orientations. Therefore, asexual people could also be confused at first, especially since sexuality is not as widely recognized as heterosexuality homosexuality and bisexuality. In addition to hetero, homo, bi, poly, pan and a, there also is demi and sapio, which are mutually independent and independent from the others. Demi means that some form of connection must have been established before an attraction can be felt. Sapio means that the other person's intelligence plays a positive role there is no well established word for the opposite of sapio, that is, being attracted to bimbos. There is also grey, which means that attraction is uncommon. There is no consensus on whether sexuality means that you cannot be turned on by someone. Orientation is involving who can turn you on and uh, who you can have sex with are not well established. 